In this video, I'm going to show you how to capture amazing paint splash photos. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Here's your host, Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how to photograph a splash of paint hitting a beautifully white surface. We're going to create a shot just like this, and we're going to do it using fairly basic equipment. Now, as you can see from the mess behind me, this is going to be one seriously messy shoot. So there are a few essential bits of equipment that you need. Some of them are photographic, others are perhaps a little more practical. Let's start by seeing exactly what I needed to get this shot. So when you're setting up your location, don't do it anywhere where a mess is going to cause problems. That's why I'm in my studio. And I'm going to set up my own little miniature studio using these white floor tiles that you can pick up from any sort of DIY store. So I'm just going to be use one flat on the table, and that's the one that the drips are going to land on and go splat. And then I'm going to have one that I'm going to put up as a background. And that background's gonna do a couple of things. It makes like a miniature studio, so I have a small sort of infinity curve, but also it's gonna stop some of the splashes going too far, and it will give me a much greater background, or at least the perception of a greater background in the photos. So I'm gonna be using my Canon 580EX Mark II flash gun to light the scene. Now, not only is it gonna light the scene, but it's also gonna freeze the action. So to get that to happen, I just need to set a couple of things up before I attach it to this little boom arm here. Now, I'm gonna put it into manual mode. That means that I can control the flash power because with all this white in the scene, the ETTL is likely to suffer. But more importantly, it means that I can actually dial in a flash power that's quite low. I'm gonna choose 1 16th power. Now, with these little flash guns, the, the lower you put the, the flash power, the faster the duration of the flash. In other words, the more stopping power they have when it comes to freezing action. Now I'm also going to trigger this using the pop-up flash on the, the Canon camera, so I need to put this into slave mode. Okay, so I'm going to attach the flash to this little boom arm that I've got set up here, and uh, that's going to keep the flash out of harm's way, and it's also going to provide overhead lighting as well. Because I have just one single flash, I'm going to light the scene from above. If you've got multiple flashes, try perhaps a, a couple of side lights coming in but my light is gonna come from above and hit the background first, so it's aimed slightly towards the background, and that should help just to back illuminate the drips, just give them a, a bit of an edge as well. So for the camera, I'm gonna be using a Canon 60D. The lens is a 7300. Now that's a good lens to choose simply because it means that I can back off from the scene with the camera. So when the, the paint splashes down, I'm gonna reduce the, the risk of getting paint all over my camera and my lens, which let's face it, that isn't really the idea of the shoot. So settings wise, I'm gonna be using a shutter speed of 200th of a second. Next, the aperture. I want a really good depth of field, so I'm gonna work at f16. Finally, the ISO, with a, a little bit of trial and error, I found that the best setting for this particular setup is ISO 200. Okay, so that's the camera settings. There's one more though, it's the flash. Now, my little 580EX2 is in slave mode. That means it needs a master or commander. Now, on my Canon 60D, I can just pop up the little flash, I can jump into the menu, I can go to flash control, and then choose the built-in flash setting and turn on the wireless function. And finally, I've just set up my little background support here, which is normally used for holding up rolls of paper and so on, but today we're gonna to use it to support the pipette that I'm gonna to use to drip the paint. So that's all kind of clamped in position. I'm just gonna use a bit of duct tape just to kind of stick this down because when we're doing the drips, we wanna make sure that this thing really doesn't move. And also, I'm gonna make sure that I stick it so that the point is mostly at the, uh, the bottom like that, and the, most of the pipette is at the top, so it doesn't wobble around too much uh, when I move it uh, about like so. So we'll make sure that's nice and firmly stuck down. And now we're actually ready to take a photo. 
Right, so I'll just fill up the pipette with paint like that and I'm ready to go but my first thing I'm going to do is actually set the focus and I set the camera focus by working out where the drip's going to land. So let's just put one small drop out, there it is. And now to make my focusing a little bit easier I'm just going to get a pen and I'm just going to put the pen and put it at the same point as the drip. We use the autofocus mode and then we can switch to manual mode for the rest of the shots. Now, there's nothing to stop you just trying to take a shot now with your very first picture and crossing your fingers. Let's see if it works. So I'm going to use my remote release because I just, I just don't have arms long enough otherwise. And I'm just going to get the first drip and I'm going to try my very best. Here it comes. Oh, <laughs> what a surprise. I, um, I didn't get it. And this is going to be a continuing theme throughout this shoot. Let's try again. Here we go. And did we get it that time? <laughs> Not at all. In fact, I can keep going, adding more and more drips. And sometimes you'll just get lucky like that. So it's a numbers game. The more pitches you take, the more chance you get of getting that perfect shot. But we can get a little bit better than this just by modifying the situation ever so slightly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of the paint and I'm just going to pour it in the middle so we have a, a small puddle of paint. Now that puddle of paint is going to act like a, uh, a little reflector and give us a, a reflection below if we catch the perfect splash. But also it acts as a little reservoir which means our splashes are a little bit more bigger and a little bit more dramatic. And that should give you a bit more of a chance to capture the actual moment of splash. Okay, so let's get going. Let's grab the uh, remote release and we'll do again a uh, first little drip. And once again, we get absolutely nothing at all. But that's fine, we'll keep going. Nearly. Bingo! After a while, things are starting to get a little bit messy. So it's a good idea to stop, have a little clean up, review your pictures and go again. So all I'm going to do is just clean up the background here because we're getting some big splashes going up the back and they're starting to interfere with the shot. So when we do get the splash, it's going to be a little bit kind of muddly in the background. The temptation is to stop between drips and review it and see whether you got the shot or not. Now that's that's a very good idea because you will at least know whether you've nailed one or not, but it's probably better to do a little sequence. Try and get into the rhythm of the drops coming down and that should give you a better shot. Just review it every half a dozen shots or so. And the real secret to this technique is never giving up. Keep going. So, okay, so you haven't got the shot yet, but keep going and you will get one. So let's keep going. Okay, so there we go. There are a couple of great shots in the camera. Now, with a bit of luck, they shouldn't need much photoshopping. We set the lights up, we set the background up, we set the camera up. There will be a little bit of Photoshop required, and that's what I'm gonna do right now. So inside of Photoshop CS6, I've gone through and found my favorite photograph to process, and it was easy to choose because it's this one. Now I've done this many times with the paint and to get a crown of paint on one of the early splashes it's a very rare thing. So this is the one I'm going to edit because I really like it. Now I said I, I won't have to do much Photoshop work and I'm, I think I'm going to be right. All I want to do is make sure this background really is white and I can do that by getting the white slider here in Adobe Camera Raw 7 which of course is identical to Lightroom 4 and I can bring my whites up to ensure that I have a nice bright white in that background. I'll check it by turning on the highlight clipping warning. That shows me that yes, these areas are nice and blown out, pure white, and then it'll gradiate down to a very, very light gray. Perfect. I could stop there, but well, I just happen to like a bit of clarity. So I'm gonna put a little bit of clarity into my picture. And I think we'll put a little bit of shadow brightness in as well, just to, to lift up these, this little shadow area there. That's basically it. Open image. Now, I said there really wouldn't be much Photoshop to do, and basically I was right.
But if you want to see more Photoshop work and find out more about Photoshop itself, then don't forget to visit the Adorama Learning site where you'll find lots of Photoshop techniques for you to try and work through. Now I'm going to do two more things inside of Photoshop before I finish and one of them is to use one of my reject images. Okay, so this image, well it's got a, a falling drip of paint but it was a fraction of a second early in the shutter. So I'm just going to get the selection tool and select that up. Now I should say I've already put this through RAW and I know this background is pure white using the same trick as on the main picture. So all I'm going to do now is choose Edit and Copy and then jump back to our main shot and we'll fit that on the screen and we'll choose edit and paste. Now that'll paste it in. Uh, of course it's a little bit big but white backgrounds on both means that if I, I move it I can position it in the right spot. I still think it's a bit big even in the right spot. So I'm just going to use a bit of free transform, edit, free transform and we'll just shrink that in like that because I reckon it probably should be about that sort of size and probably a bit more central like that. There we go. The last thing I'm going to do is to change the colors. So maybe the red isn't your cup of tea. Maybe you want to change the color to something else. Well, to do that, I'm going to come down to the very bottom of the layers panel here. I'm going to click on the little adjustment layer icon and I'm going to bring up a hue saturation adjustment layer. Now this will affect all the colors in the picture, but there's only one color. So when I change the color, the hue value, all of the, the red will change and I can have purples or, or blues or mm, cyans or yeah, actually some nasty colors. I think I'm going to go with a, a kind of a purpley color. Let's go for that. That looks pretty good. And there you go. There's how you can make a few simple changes to your paint splash pictures and create an amazing piece of photography. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.